noon, good noon, good noon. Welcome to the seven minute read. Cause I don't know what the future holds. I don't know about today, but the Lord, he holds my hand, and I know he leads the way, so come what may from day to day. I will never ever fret for the Lord. He holds my hand and he's never failed me yet. I said he's never Hallelujah, hallelujah. So comes what may from day to day, daughters, brothers of Zion. You don't have to worry. God has never failed us yet. Okay, what I'm here to do is read, seven-minute read. So let me get on with the reading, and I'll do the chatting after I read because people come through on their lunches, on their breaks, and they want to get the read on. And I'll do my talking after the read. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come before you right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for being faithful to this appointed time, to this appointed call, to pray for the marriages in the body of Christ. Lord, marriage is the honorable state. Marriage is the illustration of your relationship to the church. You illustrated in the illustration of marriage, the oneness, the fusing together of two separate individuals as one making us one. Lord, I'm a passionate. I'm I'm concerned about the marriages in the body of Christ. So Lord, we ask that you just bless my vocal cords. Bless me as I read the words off the pages that you deposited in Brother Miles Monroe, these awesome, awesome books that he has written pertaining to marriage. So Lord, we just ask that you bless this word, bless these seven minutes. We do give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We call it all done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see one person. Um, yesterday we read marriage is bigger than the two people in it on page 26 of the book. And we read a little further than I'm going to read, but I'm going to kind of digress and go back. I'm going to do what the Lord leads me to do. But I'm going to go to a perfect vow and imperfect lips. A perfect vow and imperfect lips. On, starting on page 27. Oh, let me set my timer. Got my time over here. Let me set my timer so we'll just get seven minutes. <clears throat> okay, here we go. A vow is different from a promise. A promise is a pledge to do or not to do a specific thing, such as a father promising to take his son to the zoo. A vow, on the other hand, is a solemn assertion that binds the vow maker to a certain action, service, or condition, such as a vow of poverty. As I wrote in my earlier book, Single, Married, Separated, and Life After Divorce, a promise is a commitment to do something later, and a vow is a binding commitment to begin doing something now and to continue to do it for the duration of the vow. Some vows or contracts are for life. Others are for a limited periods of time. God takes vows very seriously. God takes vows very seriously. A vow is unto death, which is why God said, don't make it if you're not going to keep it. Unto death does not mean until your natural death. It means giving God the right to allow you to die if you break the vow. Under the old covenant, if they broke vows and God's mercy did not intervene, something serious happened. A vow is not made to another person. Vows are made to God or before God. And in other words, with God as a witness. God's attitude toward vow is revealed plainly in the scriptures. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools, fulf in fools fulfill, fulfill your vow. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Ecclesiastics 5, 4, and 5. Marriage is a vow, and breaking that vow is a serious matter because it also breaks one's fellowship with God. 
The Old Testament prophet Malachi expressed God's perspective on faithfulness to the marriage vow in the following words. Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because he no longer pays attention to your offerings or accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why. It is because the Lord is acting as a witness between you and the wife of your youth. Because you have broken faith with her. Though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. That's Malachi 2, 13 and 14. Because marriage is a perfect vow made before a perfect God by two imperfect people, only God can make it work. Don't expect perfection from your spouse. Marriage is perfect, not people. But marriage is per perfect, but people are imperfect. So yeah, not people. <laughs> if you don't believe that, just take a look in the mirror. Uh-oh. The institution of marriage is constant. It never changes. People change all the time. If you want success in your marriage, commit yourself to that which does not change. Commit yourself to the institution of marriage. It will become your center of gravity and help keep you solid. Changing institutions is not the answer. Once we understand that marriage is an institution to be respected and esteemed, the thought of divorce never enters our minds. Respect for the institution of marriage helps carry us through those times when either our spouse or we act in an unrespectable manner. We don't abandon the institution because of conflicts or problems that arise. One of the problems that many people in our society have is a tendency to move frequently from job to job quitting whenever something does not go their way. Not only is this a sign of immaturity and of an unwillingness to resolve issues, it quickly erodes their credibility in the eyes of potential employers. Consider this. You go in for a job interview and they ask you, where did you last work? After you answer, they ask, why did you leave? The purpose of these questions is to assess your credibility. This employer wants to know what kind of person you are and whether or not you will be an asset to the company. Suppose you answer, I left because I didn't like my boss, or I left because of problems I had with some fellow workers. Don't be surprised if this employer does not hire you. Why should he think that you would be any different working for him? If he finds out that you have had 10 jobs over the last three years, he certainly won't hire you. He doesn't want to become number 11 on your list. Changing institutions is not the solution to the problem. The key to growth and maturity is to hang on during the tough times and work through the problems. This is just as true in marriage as it is on the job. When problems arise in a marriage relationship, a lot of people think their problems will go away if they simply divorce and then marry someone else. This is simply not the case, and I can say amen to that. Marital difficulties are almost never considered. If you bail out of the marriage before resolving the issues, then whatever problem you brought into their, that relationship, you will carry into the next one. They may take a different shape, but they will be the same problems. There was a time not too many years ago when traditional views of marriage and the family were held in highest honor and respect in Western society. Divorce was virtually unheard of, and when it occurred, carried a heavy social stigma. Not anymore. Biblical concepts of marriage and the family have come under strong attack over the past couple of generations. The humanistic philosophies so so prevalent today have helped remove the social and moral stigma from divorce. As a result, divorce and marriages have become not only commonplace, but also acceptable, even in the eyes of many believers. Some people have even gone so far as to suggest that the measure of one's manhood or womanhood is determined by how many different sex partners they have. That concept is completely twisted. It is sick and it is satanic, yet reflects what is currently happening in our society. Because of the per pervasiveness of worldly philosophies regarding marriage and family, many believers are ignorant of God's standards. We need to look again at the words of Jesus when he said, 
But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Praise God, that's seven minutes. Let me finish reading this little paragraph here. And the two of them will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Mark 10, 6, and 9. So we're going to be ending on page 30. And we are reading. Changing institutions is not the answer. And here again, many times we marry, but God didn't join us together. So that's something that you got to sit down and, 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 and decide for yourself. The scripture says what God has joined together and let no man set apart. But if you joined it together, then possibly God don't have anything to do with it. And I've heard ministers say before, you walked into it, you have to use spiritual common sense, wisdom, and walk out of it. This has been a blessed afternoon. Hello, who is that? I see somebody there. I don't know who you are. I just see one person. Welcome. Thank you for coming by, checking on our read. And this read has been such a powerful, powerful Blessing in my life and in my marriage. And, and God just keeps sending people my way with the applicable principles that I've been reading that I'm able to minister and to help them. As I was just talking with them um, before I came on, I had to call my T Mobile and make arrangements for my bill. And I was talking to the T Mobile agent, and we got to talking about the Lord. And she said that she just recently divorced after 13 years and five children. And that just grieved my spirit. It just hurts. Oh, it hurts. And she said, but God is good and I'm doing okay. And I said, yes, you are doing okay. I said, but now we've got five little people that need their father. Women cannot raise children to be a father or with the father's input because we're not the father. We're the mothers. We're the women. We need the balance. God gave the male and the female, the husband, the wife, to balance this thing. Sisters, daughters, women, we are not okay without the man in our life. Children need a father. Then they get a stepfather, and that's not the same as their father. So uh, my appeal and my prayer and my intercessor is for these marriages. And I was telling her, I said, you know what, babe? I said, it's just like T-Mobile. I said, you're working there. I said, you might get really, really upset with them people, but you are not going to leave them. You are not going to quit. Because you have a commitment. That's your livelihood. That's your life source. That job. Well, our commitment, our institution of marriage should be just as such. Our husbands hurt us. They, they go out. They do things on us. And we are hurt. And we are devastated. But can we work it out? Can't we just come back together? Can't we sit at the table? Can't we work it out? Praise God. Sometimes we can't, and that's why divorce is there. But let's truly, truly, truly do everything that is within our ability to fight for the covenant of marriage. Let's do everything that we can to, to let's fix ourselves up. Because, you know, we say, okay, look like this marriage about, oh, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to get me a new hairdo. I'm going to get me a breast implant. I'm going to do this or that because I'm going to find me another man. I'm going to get me another husband. You know, the Bible says the older women are to teach the younger. So I'm an older woman. I know I don't look it. I know I look all right to be 64, don't I? I know. I'm, but I am an older woman. And as I'm trying to, as I sit before you every day, I try to set the example. I try to have different little hairdos. These little hairdos, child, please. These little wigs cost $12. Go to Sammy's. I think it's Sammy's Clothing. Look on Google it, and you can find all these various wigs that um, Vivica Fox and Sherry Shepard and um, these various uh, actresses. It doesn't matter, but they, they're, they're not real. It's not real hair. It's just hey, just a little cute little thing. Twelve dollars. When my husband comes home, he don't know who he gonna see. What he gonna see? Put some spice in your life. I'm home every day, and I refuse for my husband to walk in here and I look like some old hag. 
He's out there every day. He's out in the workaday world, seeing women, seeing all kind of other things. But you want him to run home. He came home last night. He came in the house and he said, baby, it feels so good to come in. I, I got open the door and I felt the warmth coming out. Well, it was the warmth of the heater, but I choose to believe it was the warmth of the love and the prayer that's going on in this house through the day. Having him a little meal cooked, he cooks for me often on the regular, but I fixed it last night. Having something prepared for him because I knew he was going to be uh, late coming in. Honor your husband, favor your husband, and he will do it to us. So again, women of God, men of God, let's fight for our marriages. Let's fight for our marriages. Because with a solid marriage, we have a solid family. We have a solid school. The children are balanced in school. We have a solid church. The church is united. The body of Christ is together. We have a solid community. We have a solid city. We have a solid state. We have a solid United States. All is well. But he said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, that's not a little wickedness in the marriages, we got to stop that. He said, only then would he hear from heaven. He would forgive our sin, us Christians, as we're talking to Christians right now. He would forgive our sins and then he would heal our land, heal our land of marriage, heal our marriages. Here are land of finances. Here are lands of, of ailments and aches and quakes. If we would just turn back to God and get back in a prostrated place of prayer, pray, pray, pray without ceasing, then you'll see things change around. I'm praying without ceasing, and I'm seeing major turnarounds in my life. God bless you. I love you. Remember, Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.